Uh, welcome to Whole Truth Podcast with me, Jordan Stevens, aka We Don't Know Yet. But before we get on to that, I'd like to introduce my guest, Teresa Lola. Hello. Um, uh, you are now the Young Poet Laureate of London, which yeah. is an incredible achievement. And uh, you are yourself, of course, a writer, a poet, a performer. Um, are there any more slashes, would you say? No, I'm not. No, any more slashes in the bio? No, there weren't any. No. <laughs> I suppose, like, mm. can you can you be a poet and not s- subtly be an activist? Are you kind of an activist just in in being a poet? <laughs> I don't think I've ever uh, referred to myself as an activist, but mm. I've I feel like just an existed in writing in in this space here in yeah. Britain. I am an activist by default. It's interesting, that isn't it? Yeah. Um, you got to give me a nickname right now. What's my nickname? Oh gosh! <laughs> <laughs> you should have to go. Blue Jordan. Blue I was Jordan, thinking of like brilliant. Blue Peter. I love that. I love that. Blue Jordan, and you're wearing I don't know. Blue Jordan. Yeah. I mean, for some reason, I feel like I carry quite sad connotations. And yeah, I feel like it's perfect for this podcast as well, Blue Jordan. <laughs> I actually have been. It was weird you say that because I have been quite fascinated with the color blue of late I'm psychic <laughs> just because just because more so i love the fact that we refer to blue as an emotion yes that's very but true. there's not a re- another color to refer to a, a differing emotion that's very i true, mean you've got yeah. green with envy but you I, never say i'm feeling green yeah you always say i'm feeling blue yeah, yeah. Or like i'm feeling pink or it's I'm a feeling fascinating red. color yeah yeah and i think that's interesting and also because blue is actually the the shade of many incredible things such as the sky or the sea which I suppose is also the sky yeah. um, and also there's no blue food just let that sit for a while <laughs> I'm going to I have to find there's no blue food I've looked there it is up. it no I mean there's farmed food that yeah. can become blue that is very true I've never eaten anything blue apart from like cake icing <laughs> yeah exactly it's, it's, it's I, naturally there's no blue food which is why oh chefs have blue plasters wow so Gee, they can 100% this might as well be my next book because it's just <laughs> <laughs> so much information wow that's I fascinating know, yeah. Blue. yeah no I was thinking about about I was thinking about how um, how bizarre that is as yeah. a colour it's quite significant um all right, so um, well, uh, let's begin with with uh, how are you? Me, <laughs> as it is a mental health podcast. I'm good. I'm in a really, really good space in my than ever. So I'm good and chill. <laughs> Whoa! So that's that's quite big. That's that's pretty much that's totally on brand. <laughs> <laughs> how can um, you say that? It's yeah. on brand. It's, it's, it's you know it's like a it's a conscious yeah. it's a conscious. M- move towards something mm. towards wholeness yeah um if that is a thing the wholeness or maybe even a, a it's a continuous thing it's yeah not, i think that pressure of thinking that it's it's a now thing that wholeness is something you achieve now and wholeness is something that you have to be constantly just gives you a necessary anxiety and so i've oh. i've kind of yeah i'm i'm realizing that wholeness is a continuous thing yes and it's not which is why it's a yeah. circle yeah yeah, very, very true. It's almost like, com- like developing, I, well, how, how I feel about wholeness now more than ever is really the end goal is to have a comfort with a sense of feeling incomplete in a way. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like the yeah. wholeness is actually just a complete ease with the reality mm. that wholeness in itself is a concept, but mm. the idea of feeling whole yeah. is an acceptance of that, maybe. Very true. Perhaps. Um, what so what what happened in okay so let's try and like build a couple of things into this because I don't actually know why you became a writer or when you mm. first felt that urge. Yeah. Uh, but if you could explain your relationship with writing and also if you were if wanting to maybe highlight some of the things that happened in your teen years that mm. led you to want to yeah work a bit on how you felt. Yeah, so for me, writing has always been a therapeutic tool. Um, Even now, art is, of course, a recommended form of therapy for some. Um, I started writing when I was really young, like in primary school. Um, But in secondary school, poetry was really that diary entry for me. Um, I was in boarding school, 
um, for secondary school and I was experiencing a huge sense of isolation. Um, and I was also at that time being bullied in school as well. So that combination was very intense. And so poetry was kind of, yeah, that way of me expressing how I was feeling and just documenting that. And in my poems, I was allowed to be every version of myself and I could, you know, write myself into the world and write myself into existence and visibility in my work. Oh. So <laughs> that was that was really why I loved poetry. Um, and even getting to that point of, you know, writing poetry came from reading books because my mum my loved reading and she passed that on to me. Um, it wasn't until I moved to England um, that I actually took poetry seriously. When I, when I was in second year of uni, um, I met so many cool creatives, so many cool creatives. And just being in that space, a lot of just young people doing everything that they wanted to do and just like... Just being the coolest version of themselves really inspired me, and so I was like, I have to, I have to take this seriously. And so my friend signed me up for an open mic night in Batsy Art Centre. Oh, yeah. This was in February, February fifteenth, two thousand and fourteen. Um, I went, I read, and someone in the audience said, "You should keep going," yeah. and it became, it became bigger than me. It became just something that was helping me. It became something that was somehow helping people in the audience as well. Amazing. Yeah. I love that to say that you would you would utilize writing to express all the different versions of yourself. Yeah. Can you expand on that? Yeah, so obviously people only know once or what everyone knows different sides of you. And in that particular space, being young, vulnerable and isolated, people just kind of saw me as the quiet girl who never really spoke or whatever. And I had, you know, I had a lot of things on my mind. When you're young, when you're a teenager, your hormones are just kind of kicking yeah. and you're you're a very observational person. I had so much on my mind. There were a lot of things I loved. A part of me wanted to be, you know, a rapper, wanted to <laughs> wanted to just be like that. I I love that arrogance that rappers carried. A part, there's so many things that I loved. And so in my work, I could write myself into that. I yeah. could, yeah. So I love just how I could just create different worlds. I could be an astronaut, I could be in space. I could I could just do anything I wanted to. And I that was what fascinated me about writing. Yeah, totally. <clears throat> I like the idea of you using it as a form of expression and outside of maybe the world that you were consciously existing in. Because yeah. I, I that's the kind of message I'd, always want to get across to people who maybe haven't tried writing because it's not always having to be an act of performance it's yep. it's actually initially always just a reflective tool very true yeah and very i think true. that you know like i i remember i did i've done a couple of sessions going into prisons in in mm. london and just could be in like yo for real man like if you guys just wrote down in any form mm. and you know some of the resistance is is frustrating, not, not even frustrating, it's, I wanna say sad, it's understandable mm, for yeah. one, but like, you know, it's because it's, because there's something that comes with it, an expectation maybe, Yeah. you know, and, I, and it gets to the point where I'm like, yo, write it and burn it, man, it's not even about, you know what I mean, it's not even about, Yeah. about what you're, what, what you're saying, how to compare, it's not like you're not failing, it's not uncool, anyway. Um, so this time of isolation, would you would you say that would be your worst period of mental well being, or did it continue to? Were there continued periods after that point where you felt? Do you know what's interesting? That wasn't my worst period of my mental health. It was after. It was when I'd moved here, and I was, you know, I supposedly I had friends. I was meant to be happy. I was meant to be whole. But I hadn't dealt with that. I hadn't dealt with the things I had battled in my teen years, and so that was probably my worst period mental mentally because that was a time when I felt like I was supposed to be happy I was doing well in school like like just everything was going well for me but I just I was still feeling that huge sense of isolation I was still very unhappy I was still battling depression uh -huh. even even worse um, because I couldn't open up to my friends I couldn't open up to people in my life um, well I eventually opened up to my mum but it, it was then it was then when I felt like I should be you know when you can't because you should, before, yeah, yeah so because hard. before being being in school I could pinpoint something I could say oh this is why I'm feeling unhappy but then what happens when you you don't understand uh, why everything change. is going yeah and people outside feel like you are supposed to be in the best place in your life so I think that was why it was difficult because I didn't know how to explain what was happening um, so yeah, that was probably the time for me, just when I was in 
secondary school so like when i was doing my gcse's i mean yeah, yeah. i mean that's stress worthy yeah itself. so it's uh, so you have that added anxiety yeah hugely as well um what do you think about school you gotta be careful in it because you're the, <laughs> the young people's laureate and the young so. people's laureate for london but no but <laughs> but um so no, it's great it is great but having that real conversation so recently um there was a um, not a protest sorry that was a uh, would you when you fill out I'm trying to I'm trying oh, to a petition. Yeah, a petition. That the word that word escaped me. A petition for Ofsted to start considering not just the academic abilities of the school, uh -huh. but the mental well being of the students, the way. way the school supports the students in the school. That's great. And I think it's very, very important. So I I loved school. Well, I, I was that now. nerd in school, but you know, I think that schools should do more in supporting the well being of mean, their students. Isn't it, when I went to school, not even remotely spoken about. It, and when you hear, I remember being in school, I'm not gonna expose the school I went to, but um, <laughs> <laughs> when you hear the word counseling, it just seemed like a very taboo word. You just thought if that person in the class is going to counseling, something must be yeah, like just no concept. wrong with them. Like we just, do you get what I mean? Like we thought yeah, something I got, I got terrible when I got, I got diagnosed with ADHD in, in the middle of my GCSEs and got given a counselor. Did you I tell just, your friends or did you tell people in school? I Like I almost, yeah, no, no, I, I almost like diagnosed myself by accident in a way, mm -hmm. not by accident. Yeah. But I was ironic, <laughs> it sounds ridiculous if you think about it. <laughs> I was so bored <laughs> in one lesson in, in IT that I was like, what? I think I really have even gone to as far as why am I so bored? Like, yeah. it was almost that kind of Google IT was searching. boring though, let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, so I actually got, I got a U in that, which is unmarkable. Oh my it gosh, wasn't even yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually became a graphic designer after that, so fuck you. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I remember just typing in, and I, you know, I kind of heard it mentioned mm. from from other students or whatever. Yeah. And it, I remember, I remember so vividly reading this checklist and being like, just it was like if you relate to more than twenty eight of these thirty points. No, mm. sorry, if you relate to more than twenty two of these 30 points mm. and I related to like 28 of them oh my like gosh. quite and I was like in class like yo things just happen yeah so I'm like damn man like so I, I remember I, I think I said to my mum or, or, or my form tutor I was like mm. I don't know what this means but this is like 100% me you know mm. but um but anyway regardless of that one of the off they did a little thing called a Connors report where they asked people who around me to fill out a, a, a form mm. about me and, and then they make a basically a mean average yeah um and it goes through cam, uh, cams, which is like children's. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, but CBT mainly. But yeah, I had a school counsellor. And, and in hindsight, now knowing what I know, I'm like, what an opportunity, you know? But mm. no, there was no one around to contextualise that for me at all. Yeah. It was more like, oh, this is something I'm going to do. You know, I'll just get it over and done with. Mm. Maybe there'll be free biscuits, that kind yeah. of vibe. So like, yeah, I think that's an incredible potential tool. Yeah, to, to get schools to incentivize emotional well-being. I mean, like, why is that taking so long? No, I, I no, definitely, definitely. I wish I had that. In yeah, school. and I and I just the same way PE is, you know, compulsory. I think that mental health education should also be, even if it's not part of the syllabus, at least something that the students are constantly reminded of. And when when you began to um, approach your emotional world um, from a place that you could see, like your, your, the rest of your life seemed to be going pretty well. Um, did you, have you, have you since understood the emotions you're experiencing before, at that time? Do you now, do you now, you know, cause you, you said that yeah, the scariest yeah. thing is you don't know where they're coming from. Yeah, I've been, I've had that moment. I had that sit down. I've had those conversations, not just with myself, but the people I trust the most. Right. So I've been able to have that, but also to have the tools of how to handle whatever triggers I have. So I know when I'm, I know when I'm about to get anxious. I, kn I know when I'm about to get into a low place. So for me, what was important is just not telling myself, oh, now I'm happy, I'm whole, I'm completely fine. It's actually practically every day, how will I maintain this level of not happiness but this level of positivity perhaps yeah. um so for me I, yeah I, I know when i'm reaching those moments i know when i'm about to backslide perhaps and i, I have this tool so for me that's what's helpful can you give an example oh so um 
I, I don't know how to explain it. It's just a feeling. I know. So basically, in terms of anxiety, I just have those moments where I just completely go blank and I just start thinking about everything, like back from like when I'm young, when uh-huh. I was young. Uh-huh. And everything just comes rushing down. And in that moment, I just like completely have a breakdown and I just like <laughs> weep. And I just, I just, for me, that I just become anxious and then everything just kind of circles in my head. For me, that's what happens. Um, and so when I'm about to have that moment, I just kind of, pause my mom and I go to Costa <laughs> um, and then we just like chill and just talk talk through f- yeah and just talk through everything and I just kind of relax a bit and then yeah. I talk yeah I mean that's yeah that I mean what a, what a, yeah what a cathartic tool talking yeah so for me that's what works for everyone it's different and it's I, I I could I reckon we could stretch to talking yeah. being almost always yeah, talking way therapy of is with kind it. of not like everyone is comfortable with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. But it's it's weird. I don't initially go. I don't run to the page. I have to first talk about it. Oh and my then god! Can... Because it's it's from what I understand, it's it's an energy. You know, like mm. anxiety and depression. It, with the form of therapy that I received was, um, it, it explored what I think is a reality, but not. I'm not sure. I mean, I'm not. A, mm, not mm. I haven't got any letters after my name, <laughs> but like it's that they're inhibitory emotions. So it's like you're mm. actually feeling something a lot deeper, and mm. these things step in, and you know, and you go like, Mm-mm, no, you know, and you I think literally feel it moving through your body. Yeah, yes, and then, you know, yeah. like so, I like used to live off that anxiety, you know, because whenever mm. I feel sad or whenever I feel angry, even it would be like, Argh! and then you get, yeah, and then you build defenses in response to those inhibitory mm. emotions. Yeah, and sometimes our body tells us. Because everyone has different ways. I know that my body, I know my, literally my hair just starts to react to how I'm feeling. Really? It's the weirdest thing. Your hair? My hair. <laughs> no, it's wow. it's like, it's funny. Like I literally, this is like, I knew this like during my GCSEs, I just started losing my, my hair. I just started losing I'm like stressed. my edges. Like, and I love my edges. Yeah. But like, that's how my body reacts to stress. That's how my body reacts to me being anxious. Oh my God. And it's like really, and some people, they lose weight. Some people just start eating more. Like everyone has different ways yeah, in which yeah, their yeah. body oh, the reacts. Oh, the yeah, yeah, like yeah, defense. Yeah, and, coping, and no, so, coping yeah, mechanisms. Yeah, coping mechanisms, yeah. Um, so, wow. yeah. Understanding your body as well is not just how you're feeling, but physically understanding how your body's reacting totally. to, yeah, to mental health. Um, what would you say your best period of mental well-being is? I would say, was. <laughs> I would say last year and this year. Great. That was really when I came into my myself as a human being, but also as a poet. It's because it's been because I've been writing for so long. It's been reflective of every year my journey in life. Um, and I would say last year, I just yeah, I just came into my my own, and I just became very confident in myself, in my voice, especially. And just understood that everything will be okay and not everything has to be perfect. And thinking of I am whole, that I don't have to be, I don't have to feel whole every day, but I have to feel like I am like aiming towards that. Mm. So I would, I would probably say last year and it's just continued. And I'm, yeah. That's great. Yeah. Um, you have, you have just released a book called In Search of Equilibrium. Yeah. Which is wonderful. Thank um, you. And I was at the launch of, yes. uh, <laughs> I was a little bit late. Yeah, they, but not that yeah. late. I was only I was technically late enough to have to wait for one of the first poets to finish. Oh, okay, okay. That's so I, yeah, you still so got to see me. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I just drop myself in? At that? I could just totally. I didn't even it. know you were late. We were oh, oh. Because I was sitting at the front, like I couldn't see people coming oh, in. Oh no, I was on time. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. It was honestly fractions. Um, but I, I, I love the book. I was. I was obviously, obviously got a copy and yeah. saw you read from it and actually sort of did see the majority of poets supporting you. Um, but you said something at, it's in one of the poems, I think, when you say that grief is a universal language. Is that in the poem or did you say that? I said that during the Q&A. You said it during the <laughs> Q&A, that yeah. is it. And that stayed with me Wow. ever yeah. since. And I was like, oh my God, yeah, because it is another thing mm. that unites everyone. You can't not feel grief. Mm. Like, I'm trying to think of an instance. I mean, perhaps if you had some kind of like evergreen, entirely balanced family who had the elixir of life, but I mean, I'm sure there'd be a a grief in some. There is. Grief is not just physical loss. Sometimes it's 
you know, if a relationship ends, you, you relationship. grieve that person. Yeah. That person has died in your life in some form. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I was thinking of the way like or end of the wire. <laughs> I haven't watched the wire, so I can't relate. It's 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 a heavy but, um, it's a heavy six seasons or something, man. Wow. To be invested for that long, that's definitely something. Oh my to god, no! I felt like I lived in Baltimore. Like that was. Oh wow. Was legit. Anyway, you should definitely okay. watch that. <sighs> too many shows to watch. There I just... are too many, but The Wire is the best. So. Okay, yeah. I'll yeah. check Rotten Tomatoes and decide. <laughs> oh my god, no! It is the best. It <laughs> is like, the be- no, honestly, okay, and you know what's okay. you know what's even more wild. Sorry, this is a bit of a side chat. You know what's more wild about The Wire that I realised is that with mm. our. The, the kind of like evolution of politics and identity mm. politics. Right? Yeah. It's almost like on quota now to be diverse, right? Mm-hmm. I rewatched the first episode of The Wire recently and it, this is in the mid 90s. Yeah. It feels as if someone has gone into a writer's room and gone, like now, with our modern wow, day politics, wow, yeah. and gone, listen, guys, we've really got to represent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But they just did it. Uh, like it was a true. I think it was like most honest. Like I think the main characters when you come in as as like a a lesbian police officer who is like I wouldn't say a badass, but she's like you know, Mm-mm, yeah. She's yeah, and then you have a kind of like you have the kind of self destructive mm. male, but he has like a um, his associate is like a a much more grounded black guy. You have yeah, like wow. the head of the police is a black dude. You've got this like female lawyer who's like totally pulling this. Sh- it's just like- This is a talk or a poem. This you, is like something you should expand on. So we have no, this and the gym. <laughs> yo, and like, honestly, one of the most, one of the most, I'd say menacing characters mm. was a legit kind of uh, female gangster who like, I, yeah. don't, I think was barely even an actor. Like, I looked wow, her up wow. recently and I found, I'm pretty sure she's in prison. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> <laughs> I looked her up and I was like, oh shit, I was like, Snoop, fuck. He's real. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, anyway, it's, it's a brilliant show. But I just thought yeah. it was really interesting because it's like quite a, a deep, and I haven't even covered as much ground as I could have just then trying to recap it. But uh, yeah. anyway, and it explores every every corner of Baltimore. Like this what, first season is like mm. the police, second season, police and projects. Yeah. Then it's the docks where the drugs come in. Then it's the schools. Oh, wow. Then it's the... The, the political institution. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. No, Getting I too excited. definitely love the white. But you, yeah, you're kind of. I, f- I feel like I might go check it out. Actually, is it on Netflix? Yes, is I it? think it'd be weird if it wasn't. Okay. I don't know why it wouldn't be. Okay. Um, well, you mentioned music before. Yeah. Um, and wanting to one of the p- aspects of your personality to be some kind of channeling <laughs> of like yeah. the energy of hip hop. Yeah. Um, of course. You very kindly asked me to perform at Rap Party, which is very yeah. music orientated, and and um, we're you know music and mental health are one of the same. I think in terms of how it feels to listen to music. Mm, and yeah. So, is there anything more you want to kind of say in, in regards to your personal relationship? Are there any specific albums or songs or artists that have um, that remind you of a moment that have saved you from a moment that you yeah. go back to? Yeah, I grew up with a really eclectic music um, taste. My my dad played Fella Kuti. My mom played gospel albums, and then I was in secondary school listening to just hip hop. So I was like, constantly. Do you, you get what I mean? But yeah. for me, music has always been very therapeutic. The same way. Um, poetry has I originally wanted to be a musician, right. <laughs> but I realized very quickly I couldn't sing, so I ended up just. <laughs> you know, just reciting the work and it became poetry. That's like the untold version of how I became a poet. I love that. Um, but for me, I love the energy music because music carries this spirit. I love the energy it embodies. I love that when I listen to a song, I feel like I've been transported into the world of the musician. Yeah. And so when I would listen to hip hop, I would feel like I'm just about to go into a box uh. and ring. And that confidence was what I envied. And so I would emulate that. Um, but I, yeah, I think music has the power not just to unite us because thinking about being in secondary school, what united us was knowing the lyrics to one particular song. We would all like rap it in parties or like sing it together. And that just, that being united by that was just incredible. Yeah. So it, in terms of like, you know, the communal process of listening to music, that was something I loved in the individual feeling of being, you know, kind of a musician singing to me or rapping to me and feeling like this was a conversation between both of us. Amazing. So both of that was what I loved. In terms of a particular, you know, I've never had one particular song that I, I have like various songs for different modes and different, hey, what is it? different things. 
I love Janelle Monae's The Arc Android um, Amazing, album. That was the album. first album I ever bought. Really? Is that yeah. tightrope on it? That's a, that's yeah, it has tightrope yeah. on it. So um, I also love Mostef, mm-hmm. Mathematics. Is just it's the, very poetic that that rhyme in the beginning mathematics yeah mathematics is amazing has it got yeah. any says on that one no no i'm talking about the the song oh it's not that al- what's that what's the album's that one i think it's black on both sides oh yeah, yeah. right sides. yeah that yeah yo that album yeah that album's incredible See, i only i i i my knowledge of, of artists like most def are, are mainly on like mixed playlists so i never really know the song, oh yeah yeah i get what you mean titles yeah or, like the albums yeah. i just know that the the sounds but yeah, I've been told, constantly told by other rappers, like, you're most deaf, like, It's Max, incredible, bro. incredible. And the things he was talking about as well. Mm. Yeah. And Fela Kuti, Water No Get Enemy. Yeah, that. I mean, that was my job. It actually took me out the of instrumental. quite a sad place last year. Really? Yeah, because it's just like, I put that on every morning, and then it just, you know, it just it's like... It's just, yeah, b- before Fela comes in, yeah, I know. No Get Enemy. Oh, it's amazing. No Get Enemy. <laughs> That is literally, that is exactly how it sounds. <laughs> um, yeah, um, I love that song. So I have like different. Amazing. Yeah. I would say that now, actually, I'm going to put an official Whole Truth recommendation. If you are feeling a little glum, just type into whatever you use. Fela Kuti, that's F-E-L-A-K-U-T-I. Yeah. Water. No Get no Enemy. Just it's as a like, musician, absolutely yo, incredible. Yo, you just can't. It's one of those things, like, I feel it's difficult to not be lifted in some way, even if it's in a melancholy way, mm. you know, because it's just powerful, it's, it's got energy. It is powerful. It's like, it's almost like, you know how like it's really difficult to be sad and skip at the same time? <laughs> you ever seen anyone sad? No, it's real though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, like, you know, like if you were feeling particularly down, the last thing you'd ever want to do is skip because a part of you knows that you would be happy. <laughs> That's such a interesting image. I was just thinking when that there's an SNL skit, um, <laughs> a sad clown. You have to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no you have to watch it. Sorry, that's what I had in my mind. It's like, yeah. Does Anyways. he frown while skipping? Because I've just never seen no, that. No, so he, he goes to um, he goes to birthday parties and just like, I'm here to make you happy. <laughs> but like, he's like depressed. It's not something to laugh about, but that skit was just... <laughs> No, the skit is brilliant. It's absolutely yeah. brilliant. It's just, yeah, it's, it, it made me uncomfortable. That's what I loved. But yeah, anyways, and just a little side. <laughs> Love that. Yeah. Um, so before you, so when you said you felt this period of isolation, I just go back a little bit Yeah. Uh, to in your teenage years, boarding school, which is tough, I think, for mm. a lot of people, especially, I don't know. Anyway. Um, were you, when you say isolation, were you aware of mental health at that point? Or was it only later on when you could start to attribute certain terms or ways of dealing with how you mm. felt? Did, we, did you know, were you were like, oh, you know, I'm acting like this because of this? No. So what, no what, was, the, what was that moment? I'd never even heard of the word depression or yeah. anxiety. Even the word, I am upset. It was when I moved to, I mean, now that conversation is, is you know, it's happening a lot more in Nigeria now, but it was when I moved here, I was like, why are people saying I'm upset? Like even just people saying I'm upset was like really weird to me. Like who cares if you're upset? Like that's not something, like genuinely that's how I felt then. I had no idea how I was feeling. I just thought it oh. was, I just thought it was me not knowing how to socialize with other people in my year. I genuinely thought that, that was what it was because I'd always grown up being the shy girl. So I just thought it was part of that. Right. So I I had no idea. I'm just trying to think of when I had that moment. It came much later, actually. It came when I entered university, because it was when I left university that I decided that you know I need to actually deal with. It's this, interesting but, from a yeah. cultural. Oh, and were people starting to say terms then? Or then like, I then I became you know aware I, of it. Yeah, I became more aware of it. Do you think is there a? I mean, I'm intrigued by that cultural difference. Like, do you would you say that for that reason? Oh, do you know what I mean? Like, are people... Are the, do you know what? I, I How I'm, do people feel in Nigeria? Things and, have changed a lot. And so it would be unfair for me to speak from a perspective of what's happening now because that conversation is happening sorry, a lot Sorry, you just said that, yeah. Yeah, there are a lot of... There are mental health charities now and, you know, I even know a therapist, you know, based in Nigeria. Yeah. And so that conversation is, is a lot better than it was when I was there. But at the time, that wasn't a conversation people were having. And, and you have to think about not just the cultural difference but also a country that is so tied to religion mental health was right. part of that it's a taboo, isn't and it? so yeah so it was really about th- this is definitely an evil spirit and just kind of just being you know and that that conversation has definitely changed and widened 
um, mm. and it's a lot better now. But that was really the way it was then. Um, so yeah, things have changed a lot, a lot better, thankfully. Um, but to what extent, I'm not entirely sure. Mm. Well, I think I think I feel like as as a as a species. Someone asked me the other day. They were mm. like, and I I I, I kind of believe they were coming from more of a cynical perspective, like in a healthy yeah, way. Yeah. They were like, do you not think that you know, with all these terms, anxiety, depression, bumbling mm. around, and very specific kind of intersections of anxiety and mm. intersections of, do you think people are just attaching themselves to these ideas and if anything manifesting them? And mm. I thought like f- totally valid discussion for one. Yeah. I mean, I think there is an argument. I definitely believe in manifesting stuff. Like, I definitely believe in believing in something so much that it becomes you. You know, it's like when you see severe cases of hypochondria. Mm. One of the most sad angles of that, as an as an outsider, is mm. is seeing a healthy person make themselves ill from out of fear. That's very true. You know, yeah. um, but I mean, I suppose in that sense, it's kind of fortunate that there's a term for that, though, so they can maybe and that's recover. That's very true. There's, I don't know if you know of the Gypsy Rose case. It was a mother who convinced her daughter that she was ill. Oh, that's called um, oh, what's that called? It's called there's, a term. Yeah, there's a word for that which I can't remember. It's called like yeah. mush and ah. Ma- uh, I can't remember. Like, so I can't ma- even tell you. It's called you like mush and ma- it's called like mush and oh no, it's. It's like all that mash and shoulder or something. I don't know. Yeah, but then it's remember. something yeah. by proxy. Yeah, I, you can get yeah. it by proxy where That's very true, yeah. Where it they the the parent convinces the child, child yeah. that they're ill. That yeah. that the child is ill. Yeah. Is that the case you're talking about? That was the, the case, yeah. Oh, so it was the daughter that she was. The, the daughter she, was ill. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it, yeah. It's called something like Mashalda by proxy, yeah. I don't know. But, um, um but yeah, um, hmm. that and yeah, it's it's and it's really scary, those kind of things. But I, <laughs> yeah. but I was gonna say that my response aside of that as well mm. is I think we sometimes we don't we don't allow enough conversation to be based around the reality that we're facing, especially with technology. Mm. Because if you if you take for example, like we know, I know anyway, in my in my life, the phone can easily become a deflective mm. tool, you know. But at this exact same time, it's also a necessary tool. Very so true. it's like so I mean it's becoming a limb, mm. but in its very foundation, it's removing you from your from yeah. your it's taking you out of yourself for a sec. Yeah. So it's like of course, universally, there's going to be a, a desire mm. to understand well being because I think there's actually just more of a force pushing against that human mm. connection in the first place. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think. Why wouldn't we be anxious? Is what I'm saying. That is very true. I mean. <laughs> I mean, there's there's that conversation about whether everyone has some sort of mental illness or whether it's like just it's a spectrum. A, yeah. yeah, but um, I think I, as you said, it's it's really a conversation. I think whatever tool we have will only magnify whatever we're battling with or dealing with. So, social media. Someone who's probably dealing with anxiety, social media doesn't cause that. It just kind of magnifies that. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? But you do have people, in general, yeah, people totally. always abuse things. You know, when we think of any movement, now we have the, you know, movement to, you know, stop and reduce the stigma of mental health. People always take advantage of that. I mean, oh we God. know of issues of people having false um, suicide alarms, like false alarms that, oh, they're going to commit suicide on social media just to get attention. Yeah. So people always misuse these things. Which is dangerous for people who are yeah. genuinely ad- trying to address. Yeah, but we can't. That. Yeah, but what we we can't focus on that. We have we can't you know def, def, not def, deflect the the movement anyways. We have to focus on what is at hand. You know, really reducing the stigma and having those important conversations yeah. um, about mental health. But um, in terms of you know how many people are battling with mental health and whether it's a general thing that everyone you know is dealing with i've met people who say yes that's the case and others who think no it's it just it is a spectrum anyways i think yeah it is a spectrum and i think i feel more impassioned kind of than ever um in regards to just make it just for me like especially talking about social media there was a a place i was in last year mm. and i know exactly how i felt and i know that the situations that caused me to feel, I'd say it was an anxiety. I remember it'd be like, I'd look at something from a particular person or mm. a particularly triggering situation. And in that moment, 
these voices mm. would just enter, you know, self doubt, inadequacy, fear, you know, I need to be liked by this person or I need to be validated by this mm. person's existence and oh I gotta just it would ruin my day like oh my god what even is my day like what am I doing mm. and my shoulders would get up and you know like mm. and now I could literally I can literally go to that same place and not feel that. That's what I want to relate to people. Wow. Because it's like I it's not even You have regained that power. Yeah, yeah. it's like it's not even like a, I'm not speculating. It's like there's a there's a, a quite obvious parallel where now a specific person or a specific situation can mm. be mentioned to me and I won't instantly go to a place of like fear mm. because it's like I've released whatever was wow. underlying yeah. that because it's nothing to do with the situation is it it's like it's not if you go online and you're like mm. if you go online and you're okay so for my example in my example just as trying to be as honest as possible mm. if I went online and I saw a picture of a person who I had had a disagreement with. Mm. My knee-jerk reaction would be to actually make peace. Not, not, not. I'm not saying that it should never be an option. Yeah, so yeah. I if I went online and saw a picture of a person who I'd had some kind of emotional conflict with, mm. you know, uh, or a picture of a person who I who I admired or wished I was, you know. Mm. There would be like a, an, an, an anxious reaction, which would be like, "Oh, how can I do this? Or how can I? Maybe I should do this to make myself feel better about that mm. situation." But like underpinning all of those variations, so it could be that person, this person, mm. it could be that picture, you know, this new thing, this new thing. Underlying all of that, for me, has mostly been like a real fear of abandonment that I spent mm. like my entire life, yeah, my entire life building up walls around it mm. like in every way possible yeah to some extent even creativity like not in its in its orig origination not in it not not in my original love for creativity but definitely in the way i was tr wanting it to be expressed or how i was hoping that expression would get me mm. somewhere else and it's like so if i just go and work you know i really believe that if i just mm. ease and i have been doing this again and again mm. go actually that fear isn't even that scary. That's what so mm. as like, it's not even a thing of avoiding it. It's going like, okay, let's say I'm more scared of abandonment than anything in the world. Mm. How does that feel? Mm. And when you really, I think, allow yourself to understand how that feels, then you see that picture and it's not even like near, you know what I mean? It's not even yeah. near That's to creating that space because the root of it is like, oh, it's cool, man. We know that space now, you know? Wow. That's so powerful. No, and thinking about that, I was thinking about marking your progress and how it's individual for everyone. And we have different ways of marking our progress. And yeah. I just love, yeah, I just love hearing that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Is there any, do you have an example of that, like a space that you would have been in? I suppose with poetry, you just said it yourself, didn't you? That like Yeah, I think poetry has marked my own progress. Um, but mine has been a gradual thing. So it's not been like a light bulb moment. It's been a gradual thing. But as I said, last year was probably the time I felt healthier. Yeah, I, I, I suppose it's, yeah. But it's, it's all, I think it's, gra it's gradual in that you learn how to manage yourself, don't you? What you need. Yeah. You're the same with your body and stuff. Yeah, so for me, I've learned how to, so, I, so I've, I know when it's about to happen and I'm able to kind of take a step back and just reflect. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, thankfully, <laughs> I've yeah. been able to kind of manage my, myself and my emotions. Which is great. <laughs> All right, so let's ease up on it a little bit. It's getting a bit, you know, I just like to have a little emotional break. Um, not an actual emotional break. That's the that's the scary, th that's a scary kind. That's what they call sometimes a breakdown as an emotional break. Oh, I, I was thinking of something completely different. What were you thinking of? <laughs> I, wish, I was thinking of like a breakup, like an emotional break. Oh, like I want to go on. Yeah, it's because no. I'm, yeah. Um, what's your favorite color? Red. What type of red? Ruby Woo Mac lipstick red. <laughs> <laughs> Ruby Mac. I I love bright red because I just when if I wear red lipstick or I wear a red dress I just feel powerful. Why? I just I don't know what it is. Red just makes me feel it's powerful. Got that I mean, even if you think of the movies, whenever like the woman, woman like the sexy dress. assassin's about to come in, she's gonna have a red lipstick, mm. red dress. Like it's just yeah, and heels. That's so I don't know. Red just makes me feel powerful. Dragons. No. Fire. I'm not really into dragons. 
Um, <laughs> what do you mean in terms of red? Like red yeah. dragon? A red drag? I've never seen a red drag. I don't think they're literally red. Oh, okay. But they kind of associated with it. I mean, definitely in like... I get what you mean, like, yeah. Maybe Chinese culture, I think. Oh, know, yeah, that's, that is actually Red is the lucky colour of China, Yeah, it's it? true. That's very true. Um, with red dragon, yeah, it just seems to be a thing. Yeah, and I love that mm. when we draw the heart, we, we colour it red, but, like, red is also associated with danger as well. And blood. So I kind of yeah, and blood, and I love how both exist in the same space. Well, red is both is love very, and dangerous. Yeah, it's a very yeah. juxtaposing color. Yeah, it's a very so. interesting. It keeps surprising, so I love red. Yeah, which isn't the color of Christmas. It's green, apparently. Yeah, so. oh, well, red looks better. No, but be Coca Cola did that. <laughs> you know. Yeah, that? it's true. Yeah, I was reading up on that. But would you want a san? Would you take a picture of a Santa Claus dressed in green? Yeah. Okay, I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely would. I think Christmas should be totally refreshed. And like just Apparently, St Nicholas like only used that time to um to help the underprivileged. Vic Christmas. Oh, St okay, Nicholas, yeah, yeah. the the uh, the saint in which I think. I think everyone has different ways Christmas to celebrate. Is based on. I don't know. Everyone has different ways to celebrate. Christmas. Some look at Father Christmas. Some use it to prepare for the Chinese New Year. Some yeah. use it. I mean, Christians use it celebrating the birth of Jesus. So, I don't know if you're gonna change it. It's gonna I use be it difficult. To eat. <laughs> I use it. To, yeah, I, I love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah I mean, I'm so. I'm like, it's such a hypocrite. It's the as one well. day you don't feel guilty about. Oh, eating. I feel guilty if you ate as many mince pies as me. Oh. Yeah, I think it would be. And I'm a hypocrite as well because it's like I, I'm a, I'm definitely a bit of a Scrooge, you know, just because <laughs> I, I because I'm not a massive fan of consumerism culture. So it's like when it comes around, especially in the UK, not so much in other countries, mm. but it's like all encompassing. It's like you got to spend money. I don't know. I, don't know, I know. I know. Consumers. People okay. always go. Yeah. You must spend money. You know, <laughs> and, and it's like and mum must cook the turkey and dad and actually yeah, maybe dad very, cooks the turkey yeah. as well. It doesn't matter. We're and if all, you're not participating in that, oh, you're probably mate. seen as like lonely or something. Yeah. Right. And then I so I get all like worked up by that. But then BBC Two probably will play Rush Hour, which is like one of my favorite films. Oh, and yes. then like and I'll why do like, they play it over Christmas? It's it not even a Christmas thing. movie. It's nothing to do with Christmas. <laughs> Um, and then the mince pies will come out, man. And I'll yeah. be like, I hate Christmas while well, my face is stuffed <laughs> with mince pies. Um, all right. Uh, yeah. What's your favorite shape? <laughs> yes. You got that. I saw it. I thought you got that. Is that yeah. It's, it's it, not really mate. perfect. Yes. You come in repping, mate. That's yeah, actually. I have to say circle. I can't say triangle. You can. can. You can say triangle if you want. I you can actually I'm say not, something I've really never obscure. Really thought of, I, I would say circle. Yeah, I would say circle. Because it's just everything. Yeah, I love it's a circle. It's the start, it's the end. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I love a circle. Also, if we didn't have, I mean, there's no way we could It's the most have interesting circles, shape, in my opinion. Yeah. I have a poem about a circle in my book. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is actually. Yeah. That was. So I, I guess it's a circle. That's how. I mean, that's how the, the whole charity started, was like, trying to look into the fascination around yeah. curves. No corners. Yeah. The, yeah. Um, I mean, you just covered an incredible amount of ground. You actually said some ridiculously amazing shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just to get away, and I'm just like, yo. Uh, right. How comfortable are you talking about your mental health publicly? Like, how do you feel with the book, the book out and stuff, or be your books out? Was it your first book? Yeah, it's my first book. Is it your first book. book? Yeah, first ever book. Oh, right. So I knew it had to be important. I knew it had to be something that was urgent for me and that was urgent for me. Um, I am very comfortable talking about my mental health now. I think because I'm in a good space and because I'm very aware of the crisis um, happening right now with young people in London especially. And so um, I'm comfortable talking about my mental health, but I'm also conscious of how important it is to... It's, it's not that you have to constantly talk about your mental health if it's something that you're comfortable doing and you're in the position to help others then i think you should so mm. yeah i am i'll give it your best shot talking you know yeah definitely it definitely hard, so i love what you're doing for sure trying but um yeah no it is it's uh, i just really want us as i just want all of us to be as human as possible. 
And I really feel yeah. like being a human being is 70% like just looking at other people and, and then saying Observe, things. Yeah. <laughs> very true, very true. You know true. what I mean? It's like literally just looking at someone just saying, just saying things. Mm. Um, what do you, do you have any practical advice in terms of looking after mental health or just examples of stuff that you do? Is there like a daily practice? Is there like a, you know, it's a... Uh, um, you know, there are a lot of resources available online. So um, a lot of resources. So if you're, if, if the issue is anxiety specifically related to social media, the internet is a great tool. There are a lot of literally step-by-step -step guides mm -hmm. um, of practically what to do that could help you. So I would say the internet, this is not just for me, this is in general for any young person listening. The internet is a re really helpful guide a lot of charities on their website will have those guides and there are a lot of um talking therapies like literally texts that that are free um or low cost as well um in terms of my own practical guides i have to have so i mentioned like going to once a month my mum and i would go out for coffee and we'll just sit and we'll just talk and it's just that day i usually don't do anything and it's just both of us um and i also once have, a month yeah. Love that. Coffee. It's, and, quite, um, it's quite cinematic. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> don't tempt me because I will then film the next one. I but um, just but um, yeah, and I also have a day a week where I just reflect while I'm just in my room. My mum does it and I think I kind of learned it from her. She's just in her room and no one can knock. <laughs> she just sits there. Um, wow. Yeah. And so, and she just reads. For how long? Um, usually for like a few hours she'll just read and just like we, we don't knock on the door we just kind of leave her so like I, I always have that. that period of reflection um, where I'm just on my own and I just reflect on the week how is it going what do I need to do how am I feeling emotionally mentally I so, love yeah. that so yeah those are like my two things I have to have a period of reflection and then a period of conversation with somebody else um, and if you were to have we have an incentive which is whole hour which is to just try and um, encourage those, you know, spending a lot of time interacting with technology or maybe in like a high pressure job or mm. school to dedicate an hour of their time to themselves in the most natural way possible. What, a day or ever? No, an hour, just an hour, hour in, in the day, but mm. hopefully every day, hopefully yeah. more than an hour. But what would it be that you'd do? Quiet time. Um, what more do I do? What would it would it be that would that would that be? How oh you yeah, that would be that would time. be my hour. Yeah, just quiet time. Love myself. that quiet time. I just love quiet that as a phrase. Quiet time is important. Yeah. I don't. I remember. I, I tried to take a silence for comic relief once. For how long? A day. I think it was the hardest thing I ever did in my life. <laughs> I can't die. And you know what? This is not even a lie. I found the book that I was using. So like this is say so, you know I had I had yeah. a book with me that I'd write things on yeah. in the day. I found oh it the other day. Days. It was from when I was like ten. Just the things I was wow. like. I think I, I from memory it was like the least profound thing. Yeah. <laughs> it was like No. I, I think I just written like can I go to the toilet? <laughs> Do you, do you know I'm, I'm everything you're telling me I'm just thinking no you could do it for this you could that is something you can expand on that is amazing I mean I am um, one thing I've learned with working on myself is how to is to not feel silences mm. that was just my go to I was even one time mm. I was actually invited to a dinner party to yeah. feel silences wow <laughs> <laughs> I, I was literally brought by a friend because there was an awkward situation between four people there yeah and he was like yo just that come is through. a job to have. <laughs> you can literally that is, yeah just to be quick like you so can. if there was a moment when they were like oh yeah we did that and i'd be like <laughs> i love apple pie that is amazing <laughs> just go insane. oh wow no silence is a fascinating thing but there it's is, so powerful it is there is this guy watch random stuff he was signing for 54 years he gave a ted talk sorry what yeah he gave a ted talk after breaking that silence 54 you have to watch years it. i will send you the link i believe it i think it's f you know should i check now i don't know my phone's like falling but um yeah he was silent for a very long period of time i think it's 54 years but he gave a ted talk after but wait was this the decision I, I can't remember I, can't, I just remember watching it in a classroom once oh my god yeah but he, but he wrote things down, right? I'm sure he did. That would be bizarre to just... You're going to look it up. 
Is it John Francis? John, Fr- no. probably. Oh yeah, it was John Francis. Woof, with the knowledge. No. Uh, well, is there anything else you'd like to say? Um, not, not necessarily. Um, no. <laughs> I'm what looking forward to the hearing. What are your socials again? It's at Teresa. At Teresa underscore Lola. Yeah. Um, yeah. T H T with Teresa with a H. So T H E R E S A underscore Lola. So I say that again. T H E R E S A. So Teresa just with a H. I know, but you you and then you said underscore A underscore Lola. so fluidly. Really? T H R E S A Lola. Underscore. Underscore. Lola. Wicked. All right. Awesome. Um. So yes, I hope everyone follows you and sees you embark upon the most exciting points in your career so far, yeah. which is great. Yeah, I hope so. Thank you. Thank you for having me.